So several years ago, I get a call from one of the biggest bar associations in the United States. And they said, Steve, we want you to come in and, and talk about mental toughness. And I said, well, your, 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 your association is made up of trial lawyers. Is that correct? And they said, absolutely. He's some of the toughest trial lawyers in the world. And they're really mentally tough, but they want you to take them to the next level. And so I went in there. There are about 300 trial lawyers in the room, and I had a couple hours to talk to them. And I said right off the bat, I said, how many people on a scale of 1 to 10 would rate themselves a 10 in terms of being mentally tough? Well, people usually overrate themselves, and I know that already because I've done this for a long time. And so almost everyone in the room raised their hand and said, 10 out of a 10, they are mentally tough. And I said, okay, well, let me, let me uh, just share this with you, then I'll ask you a question, okay? Mental toughness, basically, when you break it down, if you want to really get it down to its essence, is emotional control. Now, of course, human beings are mostly emotional creatures pretending to be logic-based creatures, but we are primarily emotional. And the lawyers kind of laughed a little bit, and I said, how many people in this room would consider yourself more of a logic-based thinker than an emotion-based thinker? Every person in the room I could see raised their hand. And I said, well, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're just going to do a little test because I'll bet you guys are very tough being trial lawyers in one of the toughest states in the country. And uh, so that's why I'm here. We're talking about critical thinking, right? And mental toughness. And uh, so I'm going to give you a scenario and I want you to know up front that I am purposely trying to jar you emotionally. I'm going to tell you what I'm trying to do before I do it by giving you this scenario. Okay, so you know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to see if you can control your emotions based on what I say, because it really shouldn't affect you. But for the most people in this room, this is going to affect you emotionally. Okay, now if you're so mentally tough, you should be able to control your emotions. You won't feel any animosity in the words that I use or in the way that I use them. And they all agreed, no big deal. Oh yeah, we got this down, right? I said, so, okay, let's get started. So how many people are Christians in the room? Consider this all, this is in the United States, of course, right? Where most people are Christian. I said, how many people are Christian? Almost everyone in the room that I could see raised his or her hand. And I said, okay, that's great. Okay, I said, so let's just cut to the chase. I've done a lot of debates with Christians over the years in critical thinking because it's it's a faith-based uh, you know, it's a faith-based thing where you're, it's, which is emotional, okay, because there's not a lot of logic and data to back up uh, any religion. There's 4,500 major religions in the world. Obviously, Christianity is one of the biggest ones, and um, and it's, you know, it's it's based on it's based on faith. It's based on emotion. It's based on feeling, as opposed to fact. Okay, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Just we all know that. Okay, so if you ask any Christian apologist, someone who defends Christianity, for example, that's what you know they call an apologist. If you don't know, I've debated a lot of those people, and they will tell you any apologist in the world in Christianity will tell you that the entire Christian faith, the the validity, if you want to call it that, of the Bible hinges on one thing: the resurrection. In other words, Jesus Christ coming back to life from the dead. If that's not true, this is not my opinion, this is what apologists, people that do this professionally will tell you. If that is not true, if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, then the Bible is just, it's just a fictional account, okay? Or, or a book of stories from a long time ago. But it doesn't have the, obviously it doesn't, it's, it's not the foundation of, 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 uh, of a savior, let's say, okay? And that's something that they, they all apologists agree on. That's not something that's up for grabs. So that means we can just focus on, in critical thinking, mental toughness, let's just focus on the resurrection. I said, how many people in this room, okay, just by a show of hands, have ever seen a dead man or woman come back to life? The air went out of the room. It just stopped, right? Because these are people that have based their, most likely have based their entire lives, like 85% of the U.S. population, based their entire lives, okay, their value system, everything they teach their kids, every action they take in a lot of cases, on this book called the Bible, which hinges on a dead man coming back to life. So asking them this question is actually a very fair, unemotional question. It's just a question. How many people have seen a dead man come back to life? <clears throat> no hands go up. I said, okay, how many people in the room, by a show of hands, have ever known anyone who told you they saw a dead man or woman come back to life? 300 people in the room, they're just staring at me. I said, okay, now let's just back up for a second. Let's talk about mental toughness. How are you feeling about this? Are you starting to feel a little 
a little, little, little like you're being attacked or your whole value system, you're, you base something, you base your entire life on this premise that this book is, 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 is based in, you know, that everything's based on this book in your life. And now I'm questioning you. I'm just questioning the, just the validity of the whole thing by asking you this question. How many people are starting to feel offended? About half the people raise their, their hands. I said, you're allowing me to move you emotionally in a negative way. That's not mental toughness. That's a lack of emotional control. Mental toughness effectively is emotional control. I told you in advance that I was going to try to do this. I told you purposely I was using this. Why did I use something, a religious piece? Because that's a big thing for Christians. Okay, it's a big thing for anyone that's religious. They base their entire lives on this. Okay, so what you're saying is, if you've never seen a dead man come back to life, you've been around a long time, you don't know anyone who's ever seen a dead man come to back to life. You don't know anyone who knows 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 anyone. You've never even heard it your whole life of a dead man coming back to life, as is portrayed in the Bible, and the whole thing hinges on the resurrection. If you've never seen it or even heard about it in the history of your lifetime, or, any, or anyone in your family, how likely is it to be true? And I, now they're pissed. I, I literally have people going, oh, come on. This is the, what, what, what are you doing here? And I said, wait, wait a second. I'm just asking questions. I'm not saying the Bible is not true. I'm not saying Jesus didn't come back to life. I don't know. I wasn't there. How do, how do I know? I don't know any more than you do. I'm just asking you a series of questions to see if you're mentally tough enough to control your emotions to answer these questions. That's all it is. Just a series of questions. I'm not making any judgments. I don't have any more knowledge than you do about this. Okay, and I said, how many people in the room now find themselves at least slightly offended in what I'm saying? Almost every hand went up. I said, that's why you have to work on your level of mental toughness. You're allowing you. I just told you I was trying to manipulate you emotionally, and you walked right in the door. Okay, it should for one, it shouldn't matter what I say. Although I'm not making any claims. I don't. Again, I don't have any more information. I'm just asking questions, and I, I offended you by asking you questions. That's not mental toughness. That's emotional thinking. Okay, now you've got to shift yourself into logic-based thinking. The more you can shift yourself into logical thinking, the less, when logic goes up, emotion goes down. When emotion goes up, logic goes down. Emotion is much like alcohol. The more you drink, the higher levels it goes, the dumber you get. The less reason, the, the, the less ability you have to reason through things, to think critically. And in your job as a trial lawyer, someone's life might be on the line. They, they're counting on you to be able to think critically and to control your emotions in the process. And you guys just showed, not to beat you up, but you guys just showed that I could some stranger could come in here in the first 10 minutes of the speech and absolutely offend you and have you all emotionally up in arms because basically I'm asking you questions that, that <laughs> effectively question your entire life value system. That was a pretty easy thing for me to do. If I can shake you up that much, what do you think a courtroom, what do you think another lawyer is going to do to you that's better than you? Something to think about. And so, so that's how I started out the program. And, uh, and they were really offended at the end. And the president of the organization, the bar at that bar association, it was a state of bar association. And the guy came to me and he said, we've never heard anything like that before, but um, that was, it was pretty interesting how people really got shook up. And I said, right, that's not emotional control. They allowed me to, to get them a very emotionally, you know, turn into kind of emotional uh, negative, uh, you know, conversation. And it just, it just took a few questions. That's all it took. That's why... We all have to work on our mental toughness because we are primarily emotional creatures posing as logic-based creatures. But it's been, we're good until you get under our skin just a little bit and all of a sudden logic and critical thinking and reasoning goes out the door. And that, my friends, is a problem when it comes to performance. Whether you're a salesperson, an entrepreneur, a lawyer, a doctor, anything, you've gotta be able to, keep, to, to think clear, critically and to think clearly unemotionally. <clears throat> so it's something to consider. So if I offended you with that example, uh, that wasn't my intent, <laughs> but, but it was the intent of the story, but it wasn't intent here, intent here. But think about how emotional, uh, how emotion, how much emotion runs your life especially when it comes to your business or your job or your career. Because the more you can control your emotions, the more mentally tough you get, the more likely you are to think critically instead of emotionally.